Hey everyone, welcome back to Alchemy with Zero Phase, I'm Eric. And uh, in this video I want to show you how you can test models uh, fairly quickly, because a lot of the times you may not know which model would work best for uh, whatever it is you're working on in that particular moment. You may have a huge list of models here and sometimes you forget which ones are which. And sometimes it's good just to have a reference and uh, you can actually take those images and apply them to your textual inversion images, hyper networks, checkpoints is kind of what I have set up. Uh, you can see I've got some in here. I've obviously added more uh, models here that I could uh, put images on. And that helps you kind of understand what the style of that image is going to be. Yes, I use portraits on all of them. I just basically pick uh, one prompt and run it through a prompt matrix. Actually, with these ones here, I ran them manually, but I'm going to show you how to use a prompt matrix, not a prompt matrix, sorry, the XYZ plot to do this. So what we do is we need a prompt first. Let's just get a uh, portrait prompt going here. <coughs> um, I don't know. Let's just go with uh, handsome man this time. Handsome man with a beard. Now we're gonna get some good reference material here. Let's see, one prompt. You know, let's do extreme. Yeah, let's just get rid of that and let it, the AI do its thing. There we go. Digital illustration. We'll get rid of the digital illustration and that because I don't want it to specify a particular style, art medium, or whatever. Um, we just want the prompt. Um, so we're going to get rid of that right there so that whatever. And we're going to, you know, I didn't need to include that just because I want to uh, be very generalistic, I guess. Want definitely some uh, specifics, but we're going to be very general. And we're going to leave it in a, in a one by one format for this. And for speed, we're going to go to Euler A, drop this down to 20 steps. And let's see. Um, Do we want a detailer on this particular one? That's just going to slow things down a little bit. Let's just do that. Just because I'm just showing you about how to do this. So what we're going to do, not prompt matrix, we're going to go to the XYZ plot. And here's where you pick what it, what it is you want to plot. So um, we're just going to do a one-dimensional plot of uh, checkpoints. So you drop the menu down here up and go down. You're going to select checkpoint name. Now this gives you a lot of options. You can test out your prompt on with various different settings. Uh, it's pretty cool being able to go through and say, well, what happens if we modify this, a variable seed using the same prompt or um, prompt order or whatever, even modifying the config scale. This gives you a, a really good way of doing that and even modifying it based on let's say let's say we want uh where is it here the checkpoint name and we'll select some but then you could select over here um the config scale or even the steps because some models respond differently to different sequences of steps and so you could select steps and then in the value you'd put like uh, maybe you want to start off with 20 steps then 30 then 40 all the way up to 60 depending on how many prompts you're going to be generating. So um, well, all we're going to be doing though with this one, we're not doing any Y or Z. We're just going to be doing the checkpoint name. We come up here and this is where you can select the checkpoints that you want to run this uh, prompt against. So uh, you come up here, let's go ahead and run it against uh, the base 768 EMA model. We're going to do um, absolute reality pruned. Uh, anything v4.5 that's the anime one Artius v21 uh, and then we have the RPG artist tools I got the 1.5 v2 v3 we're gonna do the v3 v, uh, vae uh, cyber realistic sure uh, deliberate yes dreamlike photoreal yes um, dream shaper yes 
Okay, and you get the idea. So you get to select, you know, however many you want. We're even going to use the Illuminati here. Uh, let's see, let's get down. Actually, let's go uh, Epic Realism and then Illuminati. It's my, one of my favorites. It's always a little different than the others. Make sure we select our negative. And from here, we just hit Generate. And it's going to go through uh, and generate uh, the number of prompts needed to hit all of these models that we selected okay and since it's a one-dimensional plot it's just going to do the x value so it's just going to do one generation for each one of those models okay there's the first one that's on the standard 768 uh, model which is why it looks the way it does meaning it's very hard to get that model to center or um, not cut things off on the edge it has a hard time with that that one's obviously a newer model and it looks great. So we're going to pause this, come back, and we'll look at them all and uh, see you in a second. Okay, so it's finished. And it gives you this nice layout. This is what's really cool about this. Is if this was a two-dimensional one, it'll lay out one graph across the top. So what it does, it shows you um, the model, uh, and I guess the hash for it as well. So you can kind of see which one is going to do what. Now this comes in really useful when you are specifying, let's say a very specific medium that you want to work with. Um, let's go ahead and change this to the style of Rembrandt. I don't know if I spelled that right, let's see. Oh, it's just capitalized. Let's say we want to do see which models are going to um, react well to a particular medium, like oil painting. So we come up here. Let's put that in here because some models are just not trained on oil paintings. Okay. Um, I know uh, working with the RPG Artist Tool uh, V3 that it'll sometimes mediums come out. Some most a lot of times they don't. It's trained on a very specific set of things, and so if you want to make sure you have the right one, um, then this is a good way to go about doing it. So you just select the same. We just, let's just say we select the same models, and we leave everything else the same, and just go ahead and hit generate on this. Now, some of these don't require VAE. I'm going to put this back on automatic. We might get some uh, bland colors on like the anime one because it doesn't integrate well with that, but. Let's just go ahead and run that and just see what it does. All right, awesome. So as you can see, you get a good idea of which ones are going to handle different medium, like a specific medium well. Uh, as you can see, the any, anything V4.5, you know, the anime one, gave us a bit of an interesting result, a really tiny head on a large body. So maybe that one isn't the way to go. But a lot of these other ones actually turned out really well. I really like the RPG Artist tool. Like uh, the styles there, which is interesting. I, you know, if we were to zoom in on that, the image itself may not look as as like a Rembrandt style oil painting. It's definitely pulling a style there. But you get into some of these other ones, like they did really well. Um, let's see, where is Illuminati? Yeah, Illuminati did kind of how I expected. I used I use that one a lot. It's trained on a lot of really really good art styles. But again, I'm, I'm surprised at some of them. Um, but yeah, here's a great way to figure out which style, like if a particular medium will work with a particular uh, uh, um, model, this is a great way to do it. Uh, you could even use this in conjunction with uh, uh, another plot and say we want to do, um, I know there's a way to actually change like what's in the styles. Oh, it's just part of my style. So it pulls up my style sheet so I could actually run that against my styles there too. So you could have your mediums in there and actually pick different mediums from that and, and run it through that. Don't specify the medium in the, in the prompt itself. Just do a general one and in your styles have all your mediums set up and do it that way on a different on a different uh, uh, plot line. So that's pretty cool. So a super short one, just wanted to show that off. A uh, great way to also generate those, those thumbnail images for um, your uh, 
models, the checkpoints, or even the textual inversions or hyper networks. Um, when you come in here, it's just this little red button under generate, and you can select your checkpoint, and then come down here. Let's say we want to replace the preview for this one right here, and it'll take, I think, whatever uh, was selected. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work with that one because the image that we had selected is that. So, <laughs> so if you just render the image and and then you get your your individual image, you just click the replace preview, and what it does, it grabs whatever image is selected in your preview and replaces whatever's here. So, let's uh, just for kicks, let's do that. We're going to shut that off. We're just going to do one render. Okay. And leave everything else the same. We are going to, we are on the, the that one right there. So let's hit generate. Should be pretty quick. Great image. Come back here. We're going to go down to, we are on checkpoints. And we want the RPG Artist Tools V3 with VAE. We're going to select Replace Preview. And then we should... Ready to go. So if we come down here, now that we've selected to replace that, what it does is you can see that it shows the RPG Artist Tool V3 in pane here, but then you don't see the other one. Because when it updates it, it drops it down to the end, down here. So you can see it replaced the image, and uh, I'll probably end up replacing it with something else that's a little more generic. But uh, there you go. That's how you can put those thumbnails in there and get an idea of what that model can do. If you want to do something specific, it'll do that too. So, hey, like and subscribe. Join our Discord. Uh, leave a, uh, a message in the uh, comments if you want to join. I'll drop a link in there for you. Talk to you later.